Hello everyone, back again with Film Recaps. The film begins with a boy named David Copperfield. At that time, he was born without a father because his dad passed away before he was born. However, even when his aunt didn't like the fact that he was born, David always felt loved by his mom, Clara Copperfield, and his nanny, Pigotti. One day, a man named Mr. Edward Murdstone visited Clara at home, and they seemed quite close. It was strange because they even left church together. After Edward arrived, Clara suddenly told David to go on vacation to Pigotti's hometown in Yarmouth. At that time, he didn't really understand what was going on, but he followed his mom's request. When David arrived in Yarmouth, Pigotti took David to her unique home, which was a shipwrecked boat on the coast. He also met Pigotti's adopted daughter, Emily, who was around his age. There, Emily shared her dream with David of becoming a noblewoman like his mom, so she wouldn't have to clean fish for a living anymore. After their heart-to-heart -heart talk, she invited David to play with the other kids on the beach, and it made him really happy. However, when he returned home, David was shocked to hear that his mom had married Edward, who had casually invited his sister, Jane, to live with them. Since then, life became tough for David, because his stepfather and stepaunt seemed to control everything at home, even his life. Once, Edward asked David to read a story, but he got nervous and couldn't read it correctly. He admitted he felt stupid. There, Clara tried to encourage him not to give up, but Edward shouted at her for pampering David too much. Then he took David to a room and beat him. After the beating, Edward locked David in his room overnight and decided to send him to work at a bottle factory in London, owned by the Murdstone family. On David's first day at work, he had a tough time and made mistakes. His co-workers kept blaming him, and he even got scolded by his boss for supposedly breaking a bottle. As a punishment, David had to wear a sign that said he bites while he worked, and everyone at the factory laughed at him. While he was living in London, David stayed with a man named Mr. Macabre, who had a lot of debt. Many people would come to his house to collect money, but Macabre always found a way to avoid paying because he didn't have enough income. When things got really tough, Macabre thought of doing something drastic, but David stepped in and offered to help pay off Macabre's debts with the money he would earn in the future. During dinner, David, feeling sorry for the Macabre family, shared his food with them, even though he hadn't eaten much himself. Several years later, David had grown up and worked hard at the bottle factory to avoid getting blamed by his co-workers. One day, while chatting with Macabre at home, they were surprised by police officers who came to arrest Macabre and his family because they couldn't pay their debts. To pay their debts, everything in the house would be taken by the authorities. With nowhere else to go, David ended up sleeping at the bottle factory. A few days later, as David was getting ready for work like usual, Edward and Jane suddenly approached him with some sad news. They told him that Clara had passed away because of an illness. Upon hearing that, David wanted to go home to mourn, but Edward didn't allow him because Clara had been buried last week. David was upset with Edward for not letting him know when his mom was seriously ill, and now he couldn't even attend her funeral. He couldn't control his anger and caused a scene at the factory, breaking all the bottles before deciding to leave and visit his mom's grave. Filled with sorrow, David walked a long distance to his hometown. Since he had no one else, he remembered his mom talking about his aunt named Betsy Trotwood. When he arrived at her fancy mansion, David tried to introduce himself as Clara's nephew. At first, Aunt Betsy refused to let him in, but when she saw how worn out and exhausted he was, she changed her mind and agreed to take him in. After David cleaned himself up, he sat down for dinner with Aunt Betsy. She told him that she wanted to call him Trotwood and planned to send him to school if he agreed to change his name as she wished. At that time, David didn't have much of a choice, so he accepted his aunt's offer. After dinner, David met his cousin, Mr. Dick, who was obsessed with writing stories about King Charles I. Mr. Dick would often lock himself in his room for days. When David entered his cousin's room, he saw lots of papers with Dick's writing ideas. Since David shared the same hobby, he showed his own collection of writings and invited his cousin to relieve stress by attaching some of Dick's writing pieces to kites they would fly in the yard. 
The next day, while David was shooing away a donkey in the yard, a man named Mr. Rickfield, who was his aunt's financial consultant, arrived with his daughter Agnes to meet Aunt Betsy. Besides being a financial consultant, Mr. Rickfield also owned the school where David would study, so his visit was to discuss David's enrollment at the school. Seeing them deep in conversation, David took the initiative to invite Agnes to join Dick in flying kites. A few days later, David finally started attending school. On his first day, he met the school janitor named Uriah Heap, who helped him move his belongings to his dorm room. David was introduced to all the students in his class, including a well-respected student named James Steerforth. There, David didn't want his troubled past to be known, so he introduced himself as Trotwood, the name his aunt had given him. To his surprise, James and the others welcomed him warmly, and he was happy to have made new friends. In the evening, as David was getting ready to leave his school dorm room, his roommate James suddenly suggested calling him Daisy. David didn't want to make a fuss, so he agreed to his new friend's request. A little later, James asked David to read the book he was reading. Instead, David started telling a story inspired by his past experiences with Edward and Jane, who used to mistreat him. In the story, David described how those two mean people eventually faced the consequences for their actions. James really liked the story, and from then on, they became close friends who spent a lot of time together. One day, while they were coming back from the market, they were confronted by a group of bullies. David tried to stand up to them, but ended up getting beaten badly. When Agnes found out, she rushed to David to tend to his wounds, suspecting that James was responsible. However, he quickly clarified that James had actually stopped him from fighting the bullies. He also explained that he and James had become good friends at school. During their conversation, Uriah appeared and invited David to have tea with his family the next afternoon. David didn't really want to accept the invitation, but he felt obligated to agree, even though he felt uncomfortable about it. The following day at school, David shared the story of Macabre, who had a lot of debt and ended up in prison because he couldn't pay it off. Surprisingly, Macabre himself appeared in their classroom as the new art teacher. David hadn't expected to meet him again in a different city. While observing Macabre, James noticed that the art teacher's actions matched the person David had told him about earlier. This led James to suspect that Macabre was indeed the same person David had described. Then he asked Macabre to stop teaching and reported to the principal that their new art teacher was a former convict with a lot of debt. James even suggested that Micawber might have come to the school to take advantage of David's kindness. Once the principal learned about this, Micawber lost his job, and David felt guilty for sharing that story, which led to his teacher losing his job. Seeing Micawber's leaving, David went to apologize. Micawber, who was annoyed with David, eventually forgave him and asked for reimbursement of his travel expenses from London to their city, twice the amount. David gladly gave him four times the transportation costs that Micawber had paid. In the afternoon, David went to Uriah's house for tea as he had been invited by the school caretaker. He tried to enjoy the delicious food that Uriah's mother had prepared. During their tea, Uriah expressed his hope that David could help him get a job at Mr. Wickfield's financial consultant office. When David refused to convince Mr. Wickfield, Uriah threatened to reveal David's past as a factory worker to everyone. Surprisingly, the school caretaker learned about this when he was showing Mr. Macabre around school. David was shocked and didn't expect Uriah, who appeared nice, to have such cunning thoughts and be willing to do anything to get his way. Despite the threat, David stood firm and refused to help someone like Uriah. Time passed, and it was time for David's school graduation party. He met James' mother, who looked down on him because he couldn't tell her about his education when he was younger. She also implied that David didn't deserve to be friends with James, who came from a good family. Meanwhile, Uriah tried to get on Mr. Rickfield's good side by serving him a bottle of wine that Agnes's father liked. A little while later, Aunt Betsy introduced David to Mr. Spenlow, who was going to hire Betsy's nephew. But David was more interested in a girl named Dora, who was holding her pet dog. He gathered the courage to approach her and, to his surprise, found out that Dora was Mr. Spenlow's daughter. David felt embarrassed for his earlier rudeness and apologized. 
Dora, upon hearing the apology, simply smiled at the embarrassed David in front of her. On another occasion, David met Agnes to share his interest in Dora. Although Agnes pretended to be happy for him, secretly, she felt jealous because she had been keeping her own feelings for David a secret. A few days later, David went to London after being accepted as an intern at Dora's father's law firm. Even though he didn't fully understand his job, he tried his best to learn while often daydreaming about Dora. Amid his busy office schedule, he also secretly watched her and tried to arrange a meeting. With a better job, his life became happier, though he still worried about facing difficulties like in the past. One evening, while hanging out with James and other friends, David talked about his enjoyable vacation in Yarmouth and mentioned his plan to return there for a holiday. This piqued James' interest, and he expressed a desire to join David on the vacation. After the gathering, David met Agnes and was surprised to see Uriah, who had managed to get a job at Mr. Wickfield's office. She even told him that Uriah and his mother had moved in with them. The next morning, David, looking really nervous, tried to share his feelings with Dora. However, she kept talking nonstop, and his plan failed because he couldn't find a chance to say anything. Soon after, he got a message that Aunt Betsy and Dick were waiting for him at his home. So, he hurried back to meet his family. When he arrived home, Aunt Betsy explained that they had lost all their money because the value of their investments had dropped. Feeling something was off, David asked Mr. Wickfield for an explanation. Unfortunately, Agnes's father said he didn't know exactly why all of Aunt Betsy's wealth had disappeared. Afraid of going back to became poor, David tried to get a loan from Mr. Wickfield. Unexpectedly, Uriah arrived because he had taken over Mr. Wickfield's office. At that moment, David couldn't believe what was happening, especially since he knew Uriah was a cunning person. Some time passed, and David's family went bankrupt, forcing him, Aunt Betsy, and Dick to live in a rundown and cramped rented house. Even though their financial situation was terrible, David didn't want his friends to find out, so he decided to go on a holiday to Yarmouth with James. He pretended to wait in front of his old house so that James wouldn't suspect that David had fallen into poverty. After a long journey, David and James finally reached Yarmouth and visited Pigotti's family home on the coast. There, David introduced James to everyone there. Emily, who was engaged to Ham Pigotti, seemed to be interested in James, even though she was already committed to Ham. Meanwhile, James quickly became friends with the people in Yarmouth and joined in various activities with them. When their holiday ended and David was getting ready to return to London, he received news from Ham that Emily had run away with James, leaving behind a letter. In the letter, Emily explained that she and James had fallen in love and wanted to be together to improve their financial situation. Soon after, David went to James's home to tell his mother what had happened. She was convinced that her son didn't truly intend to spend his life with someone of lower social standing. David couldn't accept how Emily was being humiliated by James's mother, so he chose to leave his friend's house. On another occasion, at the office, David met Dora and tried to inform her about his dire financial situation. However, she misunderstood and thought that David was proposing to her. Without hesitation, she accepted the proposal. Shortly after, she visited David's home to meet his aunt. They had a conversation over tea, and during their talk, Aunt Betsy tried to advise Dora to think carefully about her decision to marry David, as she had faced difficulties in her own life after marrying at a young age. Meanwhile, on his way home from work, David was shocked to find Macabre and his family living on the street. While talking to them, he learned from Pigotti that Ham was still searching for Emily. Eventually, Ham decided to go to France after hearing that someone had seen Emily and James there. There, Pigotti also mentioned that she had received news of Emily's return to London. After hearing that story, David invited Pigotti and the Micawber family to stay at his place. A few hours later, Agnes went to see Aunt Betsy and showed her a letter signed by Mr. Rickfield. She then invited them all to visit Uriah. Shockingly, Uriah had stolen all of Aunt Betsy's money and had steal funds from Mr. Wickfield's office. Uriah tried to deny the accusations and even brought up Aunt Betsy's past, suggesting that she deserved to be abandoned by her husband due to her behavior. Feeling like she can't contain her anger, 
Aunt Betsy slapped Urea, and when he attempted to run, David intervened and hit him. After knowing all of the problem, Wickfield fired Urea and told him to leave his office. In the afternoon, Dora met with David and expressed that she didn't feel like they were a good match, so she wanted to end their relationship. A little later, Pigotti informed him that Emily had been located. Then, they hurried to meet Emily, along with James's mother, who also came to talk to Emily and asked her to disclose James' whereabouts. With tears in her eyes, Emily shared that James had left her while they were in Paris. The next night, James set sail to return to England, but unfortunately, a severe storm hit, leaving him stranded in the middle of the ocean. Ham, unable to bear seeing James in distress, tried to save him. However, James made the heartbreaking decision to end his own life by drowning in the ocean. The following day, James's lifeless body was discovered on the beach after being washed ashore by the waves overnight. Sometime later, with all the ups and downs in his life and the experiences of those around him, David decided to write a novel based on the challenges he had faced. He never expected his novel to become such a hit, becoming a famous author who shared his stories with a wide audience. After finding success, David finally realized his deep feelings for Agnes and married her. They had adorable children together. Besides that, he managed to buy back Aunt Betsy's house, making his life feel complete after all the hardships he had endured. In the end, the film shows David as he's about to start working on his latest book, when he suddenly sees a vision of his childhood self. There he approaches the young David and expresses gratitude for striving for success and in the end achieving it. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is never trust a guy named Uriah with your money or your secrets cause he's more slippery than a banana peel on a water slide.